Alright, welcome back strangers. <clears throat> this is the first of a new series, which is going to be Mass Revision. And today it's going to be C1, Chapter 1, AS Level Maths. So yeah, let's jump right in. Alright, the first rule we're going to look at is the power rule. And it's simply written as A to the M times A to the N equals A to the M plus N. So if we go A to the 6 times a to the 3, that would equal A to the 6 plus 3, which is equal to A to the 9. Easy as pi. Alright, next is the exact opposite. So A to the M divided by A to the N equals A to the M minus N. So if we take the exact same example, A to the 6 divided by A to the 3 equals A to the 6 minus 3, and that equals A to the 3. Right, I think the red pen works, we're going to keep using this one. The next rule we're going to look at is A to the minus M equals 1 over A to the M. Seems pretty straightforward. So A to the minus 3 equals 1 over A to the 3. Alright, next we have the uh, a to the 1 over m, that equals root a m outside, so that could mean square root, cube root, whatever. So if we do a 1 over 3, that would give us root a to the 3. So that's the same as saying cube root of a. Next rule is a, similar to the, the last one, but it's a to the n over m. And that is the same as saying root a to the m, like this one up here, but then you've got to stick this to the power of n. So let's just do an example of this. So if we go 8 to the 2 over 3, that is root 8, cube root of 8 squared. And now if we... So 8 squared equals 64, not 16, and then the cube root, which is what we've been left with, that's 64 equals 4. Next we have brackets, so brackets are now involved. So if we have a to the m, but then n on the outside of the brackets, this means now you're multiplying the powers. So this would be a, this equals a to the m times n, which is the same as saying a m n. So if we stick numbers in once again, this is a to the 3 times 4, like that, so that would be a 3 times 4, and that is a to the 12. And then finally, the most simple power rule you'll ever know is a to the 0, bearing in mind a is anything, equals 1. That is officially my favourite rule in the whole of maths. Alright, this is a... Now, moving on to carrying on with the bracket theme now, if we had, say, 4x plus 2, let's say, that is the same as saying 4x plus 8, because you are timesing the 4 by everything inside the bracket, and then leaving it on the outside there. However, if we take another statement, say, I don't know, 16x minus 8, what you can do is you can take something out of that. So if we try and find the largest number that can fit into both of those, which I think is 8. So if we take 8 outside the brackets now, what do you have to times 8 by to get to 16x? And that's 2x. And what do you have to times 8 by to get to minus 8? And that's minus 1. So that's how you take stuff out of the bracket. Okay, next we move on, move on to quadratics. And a quadratic on a graph is something which looks relatively like that. So that's a sort of a U shape on the, there's the X and the Y axis. And it's a sort of curved shape. It can be either way, so it could be that way as well. And uh, that's a quadratic, and they always come in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. That is always the form of this type of line. And depending on what A, B, and C are, is uh, how you work out the shape of that curve where a cannot equal zero 
These can uh, these can be factorised easily, as uh, was shown in the last bit, where you take something out. So if we take so if we take this for example, x squared plus two x plus one, we can see that if we put it into double brackets now, like this, basically you times everything in this bracket by everything in this bracket, and so far we've got an x squared. So now using these, we need to try and get two x plus one. <clears throat> now we know that one can only come from one thing, and that's if you times one times one. And if we look carefully, you'll see that 1x, and then you get another 1x. So this would be the same as saying x squared, because you're timesing that like that, uh, plus x, because you've got 1x there, plus x, because you times the 1 by the x, and then plus, plus 1, because you times 1 by 1. And that is the same as that, because you've just got two x's. So within these equations, basically what you're doing when you're trying to solve them is you're trying to find something which times together to make this number but then has a difference of this number here. So if we do one more example, so here we have x squared plus 4x plus 3. So we're looking for numbers which times together to make 3 but add together to make 4. And luckily with this one, put it into a double bracket, there is only one combination which times this together to make 3 and that is plus 3 and plus 1, and they also happen to add up to make 4, which is how you'd solve that. Carrying on from this, there are a few types of this kind of equation, um, that you normally will be left with this format here, ax squared plus bx plus c. If you ever end up with this sort of format, where it's x squared minus y squared, this can be what's called the difference of two squares. Because if we look here, if I just put this into a bracket for you, x plus y, x minus y, which is what this would factorise out to be. This gives you x squared, there. It gives you yx, but then it also gives you minus yx there. And then it gives you the y squared. So you get x squared plus xy minus xy minus y squared because you've got a minus there. So that all comes down to this, which is what's called the difference of two squares. Sometimes when you have to solve equations, you can't always come up with the uh, complete answer. So for example, like this, if we're trying to find x here, what we do is we plus three to both sides, so it'd be x squared equals 10, and then to get rid of that root, we'd have to, so to get rid of that square, we'd have to root both sides. So it would be x equals root 10. Now, we could put this into a calculator and work out a number, but our calculator only goes to a certain amount of decimal places, and if a question ever asks you for an exact answer, this is how you get that exact answer. You leave it in root form, which is also known as surd form, S-U-R-D, and that is how you give an exact answer. However, these surds also have their own rules on their own. So if we take, for example, root 10, this can also be written as root 5 times 2, like that. Because if you think about it, 5 times 2 is 10, and that gives you 10. But this, you can now simplify this down to root 5 times root 2. Which just means if you're in another sort of equation where you have another root 2, you can take this root 2 to it and times it to give you just 2. So it's another way of simplifying things. The other way of doing it would have been if we went root 10, that is the exact same as saying root 50 divided by 5, like that. Because obviously 50 divided by 5 is 10. But you can also write that as root 50 over root 5. And then once again, if you had another root 5, you could times this out and take it over to it. Carrying on with thirds, if we take a look at the... Um, fractional thirds, so say we had 1 over a, sorry, root a, this in maths is something that you don't want to be left with because having a uh, third as denominator is not anything nice to deal with in maths. So what we do is we uh, we rationalise it, which means we make it into a simpler term which is more easy to deal with. So the way of dealing with this one would be simply by timesing the whole thing by root a. 
So you top, multiply the top by root a, which gives you root a, and then you multiply the bottom by root a, and a root times a root equals just a. So that leaves you just a. And although it doesn't look very nice, because the denominator is now a whole number, that is a lot easier to deal with. However, in some instances, you might be left with something which looks a little bit like this. And the way to deal with this problem is always to times by the exact same that's on the bottom, but you switch the sign. So if it's a plus, you put a minus, and if it's a minus, like this, you times it by a plus. And this means that when you simplify this out, so you get a minus root b for the top, because obviously that times that is that. But then on the bottom, you get a times a, a squared, a root a times root b, so plus a root b, and then we times this bit by these two, so minus root b a, and then here we've got root b and root b, so that would be minus b. But then if we simplify this all out again, we're left with a minus root b for the top once again. But now we're left with a squared, and if we look here, a root b and b a, they're the same thing, and we're plusing and minusing one, so that just cancels out, and we're just left with that. And then the same would happen if we did the plus root. So that's how you cancel out and rationalise one of these three fractions here. So if you're ever left with one of those, always rationalise it using these three things. Alright, I think that has covered most of the basics for Chapter 1 of C1 AS Maths. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was helpful. And uh, I will be trying to put out the next video of Chapter 2 very soon, as I have exams and I'm going to try and get through the, uh, the whole of AS and A2 Maths before those. Which seems unlikely, but, you know, I can, I can work hard. So thank you for watching, and uh, be sure to check out my next video.